Okay, we're in the Gospel of Matthew, and this has been eye-opening to me particularly, because we've come across the idea that Jesus simply copied the law of Moses in the letter. Evangelicals have been misled on that point. If Jesus is only repeating the law of Moses in the letter, we then ought to be repeating the law of Moses in the letter if we're following Jesus. So the idea that Jesus simply copied the law of Moses in the letter, if that's true, it puts us at arm's length from Jesus, doesn't it? We would have two choices. We would either insist on keeping all the laws of Moses in the letter, that's what the Jewish Jews people do, then they are getting closer to Moses, but are they getting closer to Jesus? So the question I want people to ask of their friends is, what are the words of the new covenant? What are they? Where do you find them? And the answer is you find them in the words of Jesus. Jesus is not copying the law of Moses in the letter. Because Jesus said, you've heard that Moses said you could have a divorce for certain reasons. It doesn't matter what they were because it's over now. But Jesus then says, I'm telling you something different. Let's go back to Genesis. Yes, Moses allowed you a privilege for divorce and whatever that was, with a certificate of divorce. But, and then in the Sermon on the Mount, you have all the antitheses. You've heard it said, so-and-so. But, I'm telling you, not to grasp that is to fail to link up with Jesus. So, we are supposed to be followers of Jesus and his words, and Paul, who was following Jesus. So, 1 Corinthians 9, 20 is becoming a central important uh, verse for us. That's the verse that says that Paul, speaking of himself, says that he is not under the law of Moses. Not. Well, if he's following Jesus, that means Jesus was not under the law of Moses in the letter. So the critical difference then, to make this easy, and Paul isn't always easy, as you know, is to talk of letter and spirit, the contrast. Jesus, somebody has said, was giving the law of Moses, but on steroids. I don't know if that's a good analogy or not, because steroids are a bad thing. The idea is perhaps right, or it's like modulating into a new key, I told them yesterday. In music, you get a lift when you go into a new key. Jesus is saying, I'm the new Moses, and Matthew presents him as the new Moses, the new prophet. Why? Because Moses went up the mountain to get the law. Guess what Jesus did? Went up on the mountain to give the Sermon on the Mount. This is very fundamental, but I think I've been guilty of not getting this as clear as I should. So please think about that. Follow the words of Jesus. Now, against what I've just said comes this appalling idea from Dallas Theological Seminary just recently, where the writer says the gospel, the gospels, the four accounts of Jesus, are not Christianity, period. That's what they're saying. That's unbelievable to me. I mean, how mad is the world going? Then that means the gospels are part of the Old Covenant. They're only for Jews, not for you. That's to remove four books of the New Testament. We use the word New Testament, not necessarily a good idea. It should be really the New Covenant books. In fact, think about this. The word gospel is, of course, the good news of the kingdom. But we use it to name a book, Gospels. Only Justin Martyr begins to do that after the Bible. So it's all very confused. Think of the Bible then as scripture, and think of the Gospels, the four books, as containing the heart and core of Christianity. If you're not thinking that way, you're liable to go pretty much astray. That's my suggestion.